Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, I thought it'd be cool to show you around one of Cyberfort's nuclear bunker data centers. This was a former radar station back in the Cold War. This purpose of this facility was to scale the skies for any enemy planes coming over the channel. 100 feet underground, we've invested millions of pounds in power infrastructure, cooling and uh, internet connectivity uh, to really create one of the most secure data centers in the country. So we'll walk you through now and we'll, uh, we'll take a look around. So now we're on the, uh, the first level. Um, I'd like to sort of talk you through some of the physical attributes this facility has. So the external walls are three meters thick, the internal walls are a meter thick, and in between those walls there are, as, there's a rubber strip. Uh, and basically the design of the building was to be able to withstand a 22 kiloton thermonuclear blast. So that rubber strip was effectively the, uh, absorbed the impact so the inner walls remained, remained stable. So this area here, we um, lower the customer's equipment down on the five ton hoist. And then this area will be where we would distribute the customer's equipment to the desired location within the data center. Just to get to this point alone, you've gone through multiple um, access control systems and you've passed around six or seven CCTV cameras. So here we have our internal five ton blast door that essentially protects the inner perimeter of our data center. This was our um, decontamination zone back in the Cold War. So these doors were manned 24-7, 365 by military operators. You would walk through that door there into the room behind this wall and you would essentially be cleansed of any nuclear activity. You'd walk through the door and then you would be in, inside the facility itself. These doors would be closed shut, airtight gas doors. Air would be pushed out, creating a positive pressure zone so the, uh, the guys could actually operate inside the facility itself. So this is what the facility was actually built for. You can see here the Plessy terminals. So these were key infrastructure and formed part of the UK Air Defence Network. Um, and these are the bits of kit that the guys would use to create a four minute warning to lock down the country if they saw any enemy planes on the screen. But what's actually interesting is where it's positioned. So it's actually in a, a cove or a runoff is what we call on our, uh, on our corridors. So this is a 90 degree angle and you'll notice that throughout the facility itself. But what this is, this area here is basically designed for blast dissipation. So if the blast was to come through, it would hit that wall and it just wouldn't carry on through the, uh, through the facility itself. Here we find ourselves next to the two ton hoist on the upper ops of the facility. We will be going down to the, the lower operation but just wanted to give you a sense of scale really. So this is the opening to our Faraday cage. So this was actually designed to prevent any electromagnetic pulse if there was ever to be a nuclear blast that went off. But this also prevents any electronic eavesdropping. So all of our customers' data resides inside this Faraday cage. So now we find ourselves on one of our many data halls. So we've got standard hot and cold aisle segregation. And I want to talk you through really the uh, fire suppression and the fire detection systems we have in place whilst on the data floors. So if you can take a look at the fire trace system in the back of the rack, this essentially localizes any fire if there was to ever be a fire on this data floor. And it's unlike any other typical data flooding systems that you find. We've also got a fire detection system, which is Vesta. Basically, these got built-in holes into the pipes positioned above our aircon units it's got a, a vacuum inside the system and it's drawing the air in all the time, analyzing the particles, analyzing the temperature of the air. The minute there's a slight change in any of those sequences, it would detect a problem and then it would identify that there's, there, there's obviously an issue that we need to resolve. So this area here actually gives you a good visual representation of the uh, facility itself and we're actually still inside a Faraday cage with the uh, steel floors and the steel ceilings. But as part of Cyberfort's continual investment in the data center itself, that we've actually started prepping this room to become a data hall, a bit like I've just shown you previously. There's a couple of different options that we've explored here. So there is, this room can actually be a 50 or 60 rack room for one dedicated customer. It can be a multi-tenanted data hall, or it could even be a, a multiple secure suite facility for say 10 to 15 customers. So now you find ourselves in one of our uninterrupted power supply rooms which is fed from multiple diverse grid feeds. This essentially is battery backed, filtered, smooth power, providing power to all of our equipment. So I mentioned earlier in the video um, that the external walls were three meters thick. We're at the 100 foot mark 
um, underground. And I just wanted to give you a visual representation of that. This was known as the inspection hatch. Um, so you can see that they had a, a three meter thick concrete block, but in the middle was the, the rubber strip that absorbed the impact if we ever was to be under attack. So I've shown you the core infrastructure inside the data center. We're now outside and I thought it'd be nice to follow on our conversations from the power infrastructure we were discussing earlier on. So the two incoming power feeds from separate parts of the national grid feed our UPSs. That is then backed by this N plus one generation system. So we have 21,000 litres of fuel on site that, and these generators themselves have enough horsepower to run 250 family cars or a small village, just to give you a sense of scale. So there has to be a catastrophic event that happens in the UK national grid for us to lose power. But these systems essentially would keep all of our customers and all of our equipment online. So this was a, a recent upgrade to our facility and these systems are in place as a simple backup to our equipment and our customers' servers. So to give them the peace of mind that in the event of a disaster on the national grid, they are still covered and always on. So I've shown you the uh, nuclear bunker, the data center. I've taken you a tour around all the power infrastructure, all the investment that we've made. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a like. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to keep up to date with more recent videos.